families at home as well, especially. So make sure you take this uh, message back home, because I presume a lot of you don't cook. <laughs> you, you'll go home and say, Dr. Sab said this, and your wife will say, well, who's going to make it? So usually after these sort of talks, I get a headache from the women folk, but that's fine. It's nothing new, is it? So we're going to spend the next 45 minutes talking about uh, uh, healthy eating, um, physical activity. If we get time, then mental health. So I, I try to, I do this, I do one web seminar, which lasts about an hour for each one, eating, healthy eating, physical activity, mental health. We'll see how far we get, inshallah. Feel free to interject at any point. I'd much rather this be interactive than me just yapping on for 45 minutes, okay. Just as a disclaimer, I'd love to give personal advice, but I can't give personal advice. Without your medical records in front of me, and I'm not your GP, it's impossible for me to give personal advice. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. Just understand why I'm doing this. Okay, so on, I'll be honest, you know, it's really important to have ultra-adult conversations in these sort of settings. Ultra-adult conversations, okay. In January 2020, this was before COVID hit, I was sat in my local masjid, and I looked around and I thought, gosh, everybody's really, really overweight. <coughs> everybody's really overweight. Uh, we can't just do nothing about it. So if you look like, if you just take religion out of it, 50% of the BMA community are overweight. Do you know what it is in Saudi Arabia? 60%. They're massive, you know, overweight. America, it's coming about, it's high 60s. So basically, um, it's, it's an international problem of ob obesity being overweight and so forth. Not only that, Not only us, that us, so when I say us, us I mean Asian, Asian black, Afro, Afro Caribbean, Caribbean non white, white basically. basically. We, we are, are at the highest risk of developing diabetes and heart disease. Multiple, multiple reasons, reasons diet, diet, lack of activity, activity genetics, and so forth. Lots, lots of reasons. And, and you heard it in the news there's a massively disproportionate incidence, so that's number one, and mortality deaths in the Asian. In fact, if you are, if you're an Afro Caribbean woman, you have twice. As likely, you're twice as likely to die from COVID than white Caucasian counterparts. Pakistani women are next, Bangladeshi women are next, then Hindu women are next. Interesting. There must be a genetic element, Allah knows best. But obesity is, is a huge factor. So in, uh, for example, in the middle of COVID, right in the middle, um, about 50, 75% uh, of people who were admitted to ITU because of COVID were overweight. That's three and four. And one in one two, two who died, died were overweight. overweight. So it's a, it's a, it's a really important problem. And the good thing about the body, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed the body is really amazing. It can reset itself. Oh, sorry, I'll speak that. It can reset itself, the body. Okay? In other words, Allah has created this, this body so amazingly that without going to a, like an annual MOT or service, it repairs itself. It's incredible, it's, incredible. it's remarkable. remarkable, it's proof, it's proof of Allah actually, actually that, that, you know, that, that this body, body can, do, can this. do this. So it's, so it's never, never too late, late. Okay. okay? Only, I think, I three, four months ago, I have a patient, I have a patient, he's a hun he was 152 kilograms. That's nearly three times my weight, right? 152 kilograms. I said, what do, you, what do you want? Do you want pills or do you want, um, do you want, do you want to change? I want to change, I don't want to be on pills for the rest of my life. I said, okay, follow this specific diet. So I gave him In three months, he's lost 20 kilograms. No drugs, no drugs, no medication. No medication. His, cholesterol His cholesterol has gone from 7.6 to 3.8. It's halved. In how many months? Three months. Three months. And mashallah, mashallah, he's so happy. He's so, happy. so this is what we're going to talk, gonna talk about. It's never too late. Okay, You can at any point reset your mind, body and soul. And what I don't want to hear from anybody, and I say to I can't change. Anybody who say, says that, you know, subconsciously you're saying to Allah, there's no point of tazkiyah. For him? There's no There's point, no of, point sending of sending the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if it was that human, human beings can't change, change Allah wouldn't send people to help us change. change. Understand, Understand that, yeah? That, yeah? So, so therefore it's possible, possible to change. change. Okay, and yeah, Sahaba, Sahaba are proof. proof. So one thing so I have to make clear, this is not going to be an event. It's not going to be a magical moment where you're going to change. Right, very few people have that. It's a process. It takes time. And if you adopt some of the things that I'm going to talk about, give it three months minimum for your body to calibrate, then you'll see changes, inshallah. But you have to think, I tell my patients, you have to enter the zone that this is my lifelong process. Till I die, I'm going to be on this flex. Okay? That's the way you see it. 
Now look, you have a choice. And this is what I say to my patients. You have, you have a choice. When you go to the doctor, what do most doctors say to you? You have this condition, take these drugs, you'll live forever. Is that true? No. Do you feel better? No. Does your health improve? No. So I say to my patients, you've got a choice. Either you can change or just be on pills for the rest of your life and they'll keep you going. Because medicine should only be a backup. Does that make sense? Medicine should only be a backup. It shouldn't be the default. But it's not, it's not your fault. It's us, me. It's doctors who just give them this narrative, isn't it? You go to the doctor, you've got less than 10 minutes. Sometimes you go in and they tell you what's wrong with you before you've even sat down and they've got your prescription ready before you even said anything. And we've created this narrative. But you do have a choice, okay? So ask yourself, which one am I going to go for? Okay, so there's okay, so elements, elements of well-being, well okay? okay? In no, in no particular, particular order, order nutrition, well, actually, actually in this particular order, order nutritious, nutritious diet, diet is top, top of the list, list okay? okay? Regular, regular physical, physical activity, activity emotional, emotional regulation, regulation, which is mental health, and if you get time, we should do an actual longer mental health one because it needs to be discussed. Sleep is really important, and avoidance of substance misuse, which is alcohol, Muslims drink, we have to have open conversations, they do, okay? Drugs, Muslims do drugs. Smoking. It's obvious, it's obvious, right? Muslims, Muslims smoke, smoke a lot. A lot. Um, um, and then the, 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 these, these are the five that, that the, 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 the British Health and Wellbeing Organization look at. I've put I've one put more in. in. Can you see which one I've put in? Spiritual, Spiritual growth. growth. There is there a ton, is a ton of, of evidence, evidence that, the, <laughs> that the highest <laughs> level of intelligence, it used, it used to be to IQ, IQ, you know, how, how good your memory is basically. Then they, then they discovered what's called emotional, emotional intelligence, intelligence, where you're emotionally in tune with the people around you. There's more and more evidence in the scientific world coming out that actually spiritual intelligence is the highest form of intelligence. How amazing is that, Mona? Spiritual intelligence. These are non-Muslims who are talking about this. That there is a higher power. They call it higher power. They call it the universe, whatever you want to call it. We know who it is. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So basically what they say is that people who are spiritually in tune they're the most They're intelligent most people. Now, if you look at it objectively, objectively the, most the most intelligent human being that's ever graced this earth was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was the he most, most spiritual, spiritual, spiritually intelligent, connected, connected with Allah, that Allah has given anybody tawfiq with. So, so the, you know, it's yes, there. But anyway, this is what we want to talk about. So look, you have a choice. No one forces anything on you. It's in your volition, it's in your choice, your capacity to decide what goes into your mouth. Do you understand that, right? So you look at which, which side looks nicer. <laughs> the burgers, the, burgers, the you know, they look nice, don't they? The green stuff doesn't look very tasty, right? But you have a choice. And essentially the summary is, and we'll do it in a bit more detail in a minute, is you go for a high protein diet, complex carbohydrates and healthy fats. They're the three keys, okay? And you completely avoid sugar, simple carbs, which I'll talk about, and processed foods and junk, okay? Unless it's like Eid or a celebration or whatever, but, but like, not like all the time, every week type thing, okay? Essentially, that's, that's what you do because, because the, the, the bottom, bottom line is, is that sugar, sugar is poison. poison. You, you have, have to see sugar as poison. poison. You have you to have see to sugar as poison. You're going to take anything, anything away from it. So sweetener, so remember, it's chemicalized. chemicalized. Right, what, you know, you just got to think, what goes in these things? And that's the bottom line. It's not a, a, a good substitute. If you want to make something sweeter, like tea, for example, put honey in there. It's, it's shifa, but proper honey, not as the rubbish. I mean, like, go, you know, go to Withenshaw Park. They've got they've got honey bee combs there. Um, you can you can get fresh honey. or um, Heaton Park. You know, there's loads of places where you can get proper honey from. Barb can do it. Yeah, that's where I get my from. Okay, in Chol. But sugar. And the other thing is, it's highly addictive. Do you know how Barbican is called? It's on it's on it's in Cholton, uh, near Unicorn. Um, so do you know do you know do you know cocaine? You know sugar is 27 times more addictive than cocaine. How many times? 27, 27 times. times. Now, this is the thing about addiction, okay? okay. Within, Within four, four months, months you're, when you're addicted, addicted to anything, to anything whether, whether it's drugs, drugs alcohol, alcohol, and nowadays your phone, phone. Okay? okay? After four, four months, months your, 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 the part of your brain, brain that deals, deals with control, control disappears. disappears. So, so brown, brown is better than brown, white, white, and you can and publicly say that, okay, without being racist, right? Brown is better than better than white, but remember the concept of sugar, and I explain why sugar is a problem, but just cut it out. Like just see, it's, it's, it's highly addictive. You don't need it, okay? So what happens? That part of your brain disappears. In other words, what happens within four months? You lose control. Now I guarantee you, there's some of you in, in here who don't know why you're eating when you're eating. You probably just go for it without realizing. 
You know, some of you are nodding, you do that, don't you? Because you're one well, mighty. So what happens is, is that, um, this is what happens when you, when you have an addiction to something. You lose that control, the part of the brain disappears within four months. It's reversible, but within four months it goes, okay? And it's added to everything. I'll talk about this in a second. It's in absolutely everything. Do you know why it's in everything? It's because to make it taste nice. If it tastes nice, you buy more, you buy more, they earn more money, and you get ill health. You've got to understand, these food companies, they have no concern for you. No concern for you. And this verse is completely out of context. And I apologize. Don't give fools and idiots your money. And these people, they have no concern for your well-being. So if you look at, say, for example, um, uh, 0% fat Greek-style yogurt. Have you ever wondered why it's called Greek-style yogurt? Because it's not Greek yogurt. They pump it with starch. Starch is sugar. It's about 60% sugar. So in like one bowl, one, one pot, I won't say the brand name because I don't want to put anybody's business out, but one pot of yogurt has got about six to eight teaspoons of equivalent sugar put in there. Would you put six to eight teaspoons on your food? But it's already in there. Do you understand? It's put in there to make it taste nice. Okay? If you get pure Greek yogurt, which tastes absolutely disgusting, <laughs> if you get that, it's fine. Right? But, but it's really healthy, healthy for you. So, you just, so we'll talk about it in a second. second. And, basically, and basically, if you don't, if you don't burn, burn it off, when was the last time you saw an Asian go for a run? You can't remember, can you? Can you? Okay, when was the last time? You said, apart from Mana Hanif, who we see every morning, mashallah, it's an inspiration. Apart from who do you see go for a walk regularly? You don't see them. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we don't we don't exercise. So it's not burnt off. When it's not burnt off, it gets converted to fats. That's a simple equation. Okay. Now, I don't know now, if you can, can see, see this, this right? right? But look, but look at, at top, top, your top, top left, left okay? okay? This is this natural, natural sugar, sugar. Okay? okay? Basmati, Basmati rice. rice. This is going to be really hard for you guys, okay? Basmati, Basmati rice, rice, a normal portion of 150 grams, grams not, not our big plate portion, which is like stacked up this high, right? right? Has, has 10 teaspoons of sugar. How many? 10. One potato has nine. A plate of chips is nine. Just, you can look at it for yourself. French fries from your, you know, takeaway has seven. Spaghetti has six. Okay. The point is, is that I mean, look at um, uh, cereal at the bottom. Cocoa Pops has seven teaspoons of sugar that they put in there. Okay. Yeah. If you just maybe cornflakes has eight teaspoons of sugar. So imagine Rice Krispies, Rice Pops, Cheerios. Frosties, Frosties, things like, things like that. that. Just don't, just buy, don't them. buy them. They're just They're not just worth, not worth the, nutrition. the nutrition. Okay. okay. If you're going to go, go for, for, if you're going to go for, for a type of sugar, go for. We talked about complex, complex carbohydrates are things that are burnt off at a longer period. Simple carbohydrates are burnt off like this. That's why when you have, say, for example, anybody have breakfast where you have cocoa pops or cornflakes on your cup of tea at eight o'clock, by ten o'clock, do you get hungry? Yes, you do. The reason why is because your sugar's burnt off like that. If you have complex carbohydrates, it's burnt off at a longer period, stays in your system for longer. That's, that's what happens to protein as well. Protein is Latin for proteus. Proteus in Latin means the most important. It's the building blocks of your entire body. Your muscle is protein. Okay? So if you go for a protein-rich diet, for breakfast as well, instead of these rubbish cereals, or you go for slow carbs, like for example, oatmeal. Okay? Oat porridge. Really good, really good for you. For you. If you have if you that have instead, that it lasts, lasts longer, longer, you don't, don't feel, feel as hungry. hungry. Okay? okay. Weetabix is okay. Um, I don't think it's put on there, but generally I, I'd, I'd avoid any commercial stuff. I really would. Have you ever had organic Weetabix? It tastes like cardboard. And the reason why it tastes like cardboard is because they pump Weetabix to sugar to make it taste nice. Wheat on its own doesn't taste nice. That's why they bleach it. White, white flour is bleached flour. Salt, Salt is bleached. bleached. White, White rice, rice is nearly bleached. bleached. They bleach bleached these things to make it look nicer. Because culturally, culturally, white looks nicer, nicer than, than, you know, know just gen you know that, that way of thinking. Of thinking. But, brown but brown is actually is better, better and it's more natural as well at the same, same time. time. So the point so is, is, is that you just want to think about, about have a think about it. Now on the bottom right where it says a healthy breakfast, cereal, toast and fruit juice, look, brown flakes, milk, brown toast and apple juice is 16 teaspoons of sugar. I mean, that's I mean, just, just loads, loads isn't, it? isn't it? Do you know how many teaspoons teaspoon you're allowed a day? day. Six. Six. That's, that's it. it. 
if you're like in really hungry or you've got something really important, max 12. That's in included in, well, that's the total in your total food for the whole day. Okay? So just have a think and think, okay, if it has got sugar in I'm, or excess sugar, I'm not going to go for it. And maybe go for the lower sugar, sugar ones, okay? Now, now, if you want if you to find, want to find out, out what's got what, what in, in, if you just, you just Google, Google Dr. Dr. David Unwin, Unwin. Yep. yep, Dr. Dr. David, David Un Unwin, Unwin sugar, sugar charts, charts. and Google, Google image it, image it. Okay. okay? He's got, He's a, got whole a whole list of pretty much every single food in their sugar content. But you want to go for a low-carb diet, low-carbohydrate, low-sugar diet, you'll lose weight like nothing, like nothing. Your blood pressure will shoot down as well, in no time. Okay. And this, and this is all geared around, around. why are we talking about, about this? Because what we found is that sugar, it, it affects what's called your metabolic health, your metabolism, how well you can burn things off. Okay? Remember, when you're young, you can eat anything and you just don't put on weight, do you? But what happens to Asians is that when you get to like 30, I mean, why have 30 year olds got bellies? You understand? Why have 30 year olds got bellies? When we did this Shaman Mana Hanif, Kana Sadaru who were Badun who Siwa, until he was 63, until he passed away, Sasan, his whole, his chest and his stomach were straight. Now the Prophet Sasan was like, Mazboot, he was like built. You know, very strong. If you look, if you read the description, his hands, his feet, his shoulders, he was broad shouldered, fleshy hands, meaning he had muscle. Sasan, have you ever, anybody rode a horse here? It's really hard riding a horse. If you go ride a horse properly, you have to be really fit to ride and rein one in. And, my, and the Prophet Hassan did this till he, till he was in his 60s. It's really, you understand? So he was like really, really strong. So this is all about metabolic health. And, and basically, it's more important than how heavy you are. People used to think, oh, it's my weight, it's my weight, it's my weight. It's not. You can have skinny people but have bad metabolic health. Now, what happens is this. If you have, for example, excess belly fat here, Okay, remember, remember, if somebody, if somebody has, has belly, belly fat, fat, it's the it's tip of the iceberg. iceberg. When you look at an iceberg, iceberg there's more there's ice, and there's, there's two thirds more ice underneath, underneath than what you can see. see. Like a mountain, like a mountain. you know a mountain? Two thirds, two thirds of the mountain, mountain is underground. underground. What you can what see is just one third. So when you look at your belly, that's just one third of what it is. Two thirds of fat is gone that way as well. Okay, so if you've got that, you can also have what's called insulin resistance. Why sugar bad? When you ingest sugar, it's not, na it's not natural. So whatever, whether it's natural or, un or added sugar, your body has to break it down by a hormone called insulin. That insulin breaks down the sugar and it gets absorbed into your muscles for energy, muscle and brain. Okay? With time, that process, the, when you're having excess sugar or high carbohydrate diet, your body thinks, I can't keep up with this. I just can't do this anymore. And then what and happens, happens is, is that your insulin, insulin doesn't work, work as, well. as well. It's called it's insulin called resistance. resistance. So, when, so you when you eat that, that stuff, stuff that you usually eat, you think, oh my God, 10 years ago, I could burn it off, I can't do it anymore. That's why. And in Asians, one of my teachers, Dr. Lewis, she's retired now, when I was doing pediatrics, she said, why, why do Asians develop diabetes before white counterparts? She said, because what we, <laughs> there was a study done that in Asian culture, what defines a healthy baby or a healthy child? Chubby cheeks or how big they are. Eat eat eat, 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 eat. Okay, I get that I get from that a Pian Muhammad point of view. view. But there's two problems, problems with that. With that. Number, one, Number one, it creates this. this. Number, Number two, two spiritually, spiritually, it ruins a child. child. For you to you be spiritually, spiritually sound, sound, one of the, the most important things is to eat less. less. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a principle that the Sufis have developed. And there's a reason for that, which we haven't got time for. Your sugar then goes up. When your sugar goes up, that's what makes your blood pressure go up. It's less so fats, it's more sugar. When you don't, when you don't burn, burn off, off sugar, sugar, it gets converted, it gets converted to TG. TG is triglycerides, which is just it's fat. Just, it's, just, it's, just it's just pure, pure fat. fat. Your, Your good, good cholesterol, cholesterol, which you need for energy, is reduced because you've got bad cholesterol that's just stuck just everywhere. everywhere. Okay? Okay. Then what happens then what is that's happens, not normal. normal. Your body thinks, body I need to get rid of this. this. It can't get rid of it. So it creates what's called inflammation. Inflammation is your body's fight. And actually they say that one of the biggest killers right now is chronic inflammation. Your body in the state of constant fight. And it all stems from what? High carb, high sugar levels. Okay? Oxidative stress is when your organs aren't getting enough oxygen. Why? Because your arteries are clogged with fat. That doesn't allow the blood to push through. When your arteries are clogged, you also have a thicker, your blood is thicker, you're more prone to clots. This all stems from what? Sugar. When that happens, you end up with all sorts of neurological diseases, diabetes. In women, you can get polycystic ovaries. Fatty liver is NASH. It even, there's, there's links to 13 cancers with this. How many? 
13 cancers. That's enough. One's enough, isn't it? Obviously, stroke and heart disease. And even if you're skinny, you can still have high sugar levels. Even if you're skinny, you can potentially still have high blood pressure. You can potentially have bad, I mean, high fat levels. Just because you're skinny doesn't mean that you're okay. So don't just look at your weight. You have to look at what's called your metabolic health. And the bottom line is, it's sugar that's making us fat. Okay? Sugar and high carb diet that's making us fat. So to help you, okay, because there's, there's more I can say, but time's short. Take a look at Dr. David Unwin's work. Okay, just Google him. So this, this, this chap, he, he's a GP in Southport. He developed diabetes, he was mortified. And he didn't want to go on medication. So he developed this plan, fast forward five to six years. He's internationally recognized for this. In his, if you go to his practice, 50% of his diabetic patients no longer have diabetes. And, and, and it's all without drugs. No medication, 50%. How incredible is that? So, so if you're, you're one of his patients, patients you've got a 50% chance, chance, chance of reversing your diabetes, diabetes completely without, without any medication. By going, by going on his on program, which is which literally is a low-carb low diet. diet. That's, That's it. it. If you want, if you want a specific, specific, take a look take at um, eight-week eight week blood sugar, sugar diet. diet. If you, are, if you, if you want if you to, want but to, check in with your GP before you do it, especially if you've got diabetes. Take a look at Asim Malotra, who's a brilliant cardiologist from London. Pyopi diet. It's essentially low carb diet. Take a look, just Google it, get the book. Okay, but take a look at it. It's essentially a Mediterranean diet, which is the most healthiest diet on the planet. When my grandparents first came over to England, you know, you go for your health check to see your GP for the first time. And uh, the GP said to Fatima Bibi, he said, I'm going to give you two advices. He said, number one, don't have an Asian diet in England. He said, why? So it just, just the, the climate, climate doesn't work. work. In India, in this, India is a, this is a this is a British, British <laughs> medic, medic in the sixties. He said, don't, don't have, have an Indian, Indian diet here. The, the climate doesn't suit it. In India, it's nice and hot. hot. You can you, you walk, walk everywhere. everywhere. Okay. okay, your jobs your are like that. You burn it off in no time. In England, you know, it doesn't work like that. It's cold. You don't walk as much and so forth. And then she said, I can't do that. So the second, the second thing, thing, have a glass, a glass of wine, wine, a small glass of wine before you go to bed. <laughs> so my grandma, obviously, she couldn't speak English. So she said to my, said to my grandfather, I said, I'm okay. And he said, he's saying to you, okay, make sure you have a glass of wine before you go to bed. And she said, I don't have a jam chair. <laughs> so we don't advocate the first one. Okay, we don't advocate the first one. But look at what he said. How intelligent is that? So you ha yeah, this is going to be a massive culture, culture shock, shock for, you. for you. But you have you to have, have, to have, to have a think, think about long term. term. Maybe, Maybe I need to give up my salon roti. roti. More often, More often. Give, it up. give it up. And that's, and really, that's hard. really hard. And I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. But you've got to ask you yourself your question, question, question. question. Which is what I had to ask myself. Is that? Because I was born with a heart problem. I was born with a hole in my heart. I had an operation when I was eight years old. A heart operation. And uh, when, when, when you're young and you start looking into it, you know when they, when they take the heart out, they put it in ice to keep the muscle going. When you read the seerah of the Rasul Sallallahu when he was a young boy, when he was eight years old, and he had his heart taken out, what did they put it in? Ice. That doesn't happen for no reason. I guarantee you, some cardiologist read that and said, I've got a good idea, let's put it in ice. <laughs> You know Zamzam? 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 It is, it the, is most, the most, and, and then, then they then washed, washed it in Zamzam. Zamzam. Right? right? When, it, when, when you, when you have, have heart bypass, bypass the, fluid the fluid that they, that they use, use to, 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 to allow, allow for the, for they mix, they mix it in with the blood, blood to allow the blood to still pump around on the machine that they use to keep you alive, is exactly the same composite as Zamzam. Ionically, in terms of the nutrients that's in there, it's exactly, these things don't happen for no reason. I'm digressing. I'm digressing. So question, so question yourself. yourself, and these, and are, these are sort of questions, questions you want to add. I just want you to think. I don't want you, you know, you know change remember, it's changes that happen like that. that. Just think about, think about it. it. Why, why do you, do you eat? eat? Have you ever asked yourself, yourself, why am I eating? eating? Some, Some people eat because of stress. stress. There's, a book, There's a book called Food Junkies. junkies. It, looked it looked at people who are very obese. It concluded that they're eating because of comfort eating, stress eating. Ask yourself, do I eat because I'm stressed? And why does that happen? 
Because when, when we were kids, kids if we didn't we shut, up, shut up, what did our parents, our parents do? do? Have a sweet. Have a sweet. <laughs> Keep them Keep quiet. A lot bless them. them. They do, you know, they, they, and we, I still do it. You understand? I've been mistakes. It's just that's what parents do out of love and muhabba for their child. We never criticize them or blame them. You know, John Kumban for our parents. So um, it, it's that co it's conditioning the brain that when I'm when I'm stressed, I eat. Do you eat because you're bored? A lot of people ate during lockdown because they were bored. Two top sellers during the first two lockdowns. Do you know what they were? Have a guess. No, close. Begins with a C. Chocolate. And the other one? Alcohol. Because they were bored. So people's weight went up. How much do I eat? Ask yourself, do I eat, like, are my portions massive? Am I eating for England? Right? How much am I eating? Nobody looks at how much they actually eat. How often do I eat? Nobody talks about every so often you go in the kitchen, you put something in, what am I eating? We've gone from a, we've gone from a, 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 a culture, like even now, even now you've got people who have to actually really go quite far to the marketplace to buy the basic necessities. We don't even need to move. You go online, go online just, just eat. eat. I'm just going to order a order meal. meal. Boom, it's delivered. You can, you can go, go to Tesco. Tesco. I, don't, I don't honestly appreciate this. I'm saying this to my kids. kids. You, you, we, we are, are so, so privileged, privileged, so privileged that I, I was cutting, cutting fruit for my children. children. I said, you know, yeah. only, only a hundred years, years ago, ago, if a person, if a person had apple, apple, banana, banana kiwi, kiwi, grapes, and blueberries, that's what we cut for them. They would. That's how kings lived. You can go now to any shop and just pick whatever you want from any part of the world whenever you want. Are we not are living we like, like kings? kings? And we still moan? Ya Allah. Ya Allah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But how often do I eat? Okay. okay. And then ask yourself, what do I eat? These are the questions, are the questions you want to ask yourself. And it ultimately boils down to this one question. Do you control food or does food control you? If you habitually eat a lot, there's a hormone called leptin. Leptin is the hormone that tells you to stop eating. Remember, Remember, like insulin, like if, insulin if you eat too much, too much that leptin, leptin things, I ain't bothering with you anymore because you're just you're making me making work, work so hard, hard I'm not going to release, release myself to tell you to stop eating. You have you complete have dis-regulation of your hormones. hormones. There's another, There's another hormone, hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin, ghrelin, ghrelin is, is when you're hungry. hungry. It, tells it tells you to you eat. eat. Okay? okay? You have you a complete mismatch. Leptin has disappeared. It's telling you to forget you, you can't eat. Ghrelin saying you're hungry, you're hungry, you're hungry, you're hungry. You can see where the cycle's going, okay? So these are the things that you want to question yourself. So I'll give you some quick wins to help you, okay? Most people, you know Akil, the boxer, convert? Yeah, he trained me for a while. So he said to me, he said, most people, they're actually thirsty. They are not hungry. They're thirsty. So make sure you drink at least a litre and a half of water a day. Filtered water. Our pipes, they're from nearly 100 years ago. Copper pipes, toxic metals. Filter it. It filters out all the metals from it. Okay, get buy a filter. It's about twenty quid. Make sure you have filtered water. But have a liter and a half a day, or bottled water. Okay, like spring water. Really, really healthy stuff. And eat with purpose. What's the muxas of eating? There's only two reasons of eating. What is it? Survival, so your body can function. And the second reason is to serve Allah. That's it. Now remember, remember, when you, when you serve, serve Allah, Allah, when you serve, you serve people, people, you ultimately, ultimately are serving Allah. Sayyidul Qawm Khadimun. The best of people, according to my Prophet are those who are in the service, service of others. others. So if you're eating, eating for strength, strength, I can go to work, work so I can so benefit, benefit my family. family. That's, That's ibadah. ibadah. Okay? okay? If you're if eating, eating so I can stand, stand in salah and I'm not half asleep. That's ibadah. If you choose to eat so that you can function when you do your studies, that's ibadah. But you have to have intention, you have to have what's called a higher purpose. You don't you don't eat you don't live to eat. You don't what? You don't live to eat. You eat to live. The two different things. And Mufti Shabbir, Havidullah, he said recently, I think my brother was there, he was telling me. He said two things are ruining this ummah. He said number one, eating out. This culture of eating out all the time. And number two, social media. How intelligent is that? It's ruining, ruining us. us. And then go and then for go two, for meals, two meals, a meals a day. That's, That's it. it. Bus. Bus. You will you survive. survive. What's proof? What's proof? Ramadan. 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 We eat we two, eat two meals, meals a day. I don't know about, about you. I feel I the most healthiest in Ramadan. In Ramadan, I feel the most healthiest. In work, I'm on fire. My brain power is the best in Ramadan. So have two meals a day. There's a saying from our ulama that eating once a day, adatul anbiya, is the habit of the anbiya. 
twice a day, Adatul Awliya is the way of the Awliya. Three times a day, I won't mention what they said. I'm in the masjid. It's in the Ihya. So eat two meals a day and try to have 10 to 12 hours apart to give your body and those hormones a rest. Okay? Because then that's what, what happens is your insulin will regulate, your leptin will regulate, your ghrelin will regulate. And if you get hungry, drink first. If you get hungry, ask yourself, am I bored? If you get hungry, ask yourself, am I stressed? If the question is no, 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 I'm genuinely hungry, just snack on fruit or raw veg or even nuts. So, so when, I have a, 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 when I'm at work, my wife often, my little lunchbox is just fruit and uh, raw veg, usually strips of carrot and cucumber, maybe a khajur and water, and I'll have it if I get hungry. Okay? That's it. Breakfast and uh, evening meal. In fact, this time of year is like, what time is Fajr here? So maybe have breakfast before Fajr. Half six, half six, and then when you, come, you come home, eat six, six half, half six, six. you've got a 12 hour, 12 hour gap, okay? And what you wanna go for is, remember, protein rich, whole meal, so brown, not sugar, but brown stuff, slow release carbohydrates, okay? Whole meal, good fats, I'll talk about fats in a minute. Avoid, honestly, avoid junk food. Avoid processed foods, I won't say where, but recently, not recently, you know, everybody has freezer foods at home. You know, because we're useless men, we don't cook, right? So if the wife's tired, I'll just put something in the freezer. So we, we bought some burgers, okay? Ultra halal burgers, 100% halal, yeah? We bought these burgers, right? And uh, uh, you put it in the, in, the, in the oven, and you've got an amazing burger, right? I turned the packet over, and I, thought, I said, why is there 83 ingredients in this? Like, what do you need to make a burger? Meat? Masala? Onion? What else? Chili? I've got, I've got four. four. Water? water. <laughs> you know, sprinkle, sprinkle water. water. Five. Five. Why, why has this got 80? Got 80? And if you ask yourself, why, why is to make it make taste, taste nice? nice. Half, the Half the stuff I don't even recognize. E numbers. You know what E numbers are? Okay, did okay, you know, you know that, that in Fanta, Fanta they put they um, the same thing that they use to you know de rust an iron? In Skittles, they put fungus in there. They're open about it. And we, and we give this to our, our kids, kids type thing. Okay. So avoid so it completely, it completely and, and just check. check. Look, at look, back, look at the back, look at the back. Just check, just check. it'll, it'll say, say low sugar, sugar right? right? But just look, just to, look see to see if it's got something called fructose, fructose syrup. syrup. Dangerous, dangerous stuff. stuff. Corn, corn syrup. syrup. Dangerous, dangerous stuff. stuff. Corn, corn makes, makes you fat, basically. Avoid anything with corn in or corn syrup or fructose syrup. Okay, this is how these companies, they blag things in there saying it's no added sugar. Well, okay, well, you haven't put the teaspoon sugar stuff in, stuff in, but you've put this rubbish in, and it's, and it's, re it's really, really hard, hard to burn, to burn off. off. And avoid, avoid trans fats, fats and fried, fried foods. foods. Okay? okay. Avo please, please avoid fried, fried foods. Why fried foods? Because what happens, you know, samosa, for example, right? You put it in the fryer. What happens is that oil gets converted to what's called a... Oil is liquid, isn't it? It gets converted to a semi-solid, half-solid, half-liquid state. You ingest it, you eat, you eat it. It clogs your arteries. It's really, really, really hard to burn off. It's rock, rock hard, hard to burn, to burn off. off. Okay, just, just, just avoid, avoid fried foods. Get an air fryer. fryer. It doesn't taste it doesn't as taste nice, nice, but remember, remember you're, not you're not eating, eating you're, not you're not living to eat, you're eating to live. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it doesn't, doesn't taste, taste nice, you'll get used to it. Okay? So basically, avoid fried foods completely. Okay, Ramadan, I drive my mum absolutely bagel in Ramadan. Because obviously, you can't not have samosas in Ramadan, can you? You know, <laughs> I spent, spent all this time, the whole of Shaban, Shaban I've spent <laughs> making you know, samosa. And then I'm like, Mama, like, you, like, you have to have it. Have it. So, so just, but all the time, all time? one of my patients, uh, he's, uh, not, he's not, he's not Muslim, Muslim, but he's from, from India. India. And when and I did this talk with my patients, he said, he said, I said, why? He said, because in lockdown, what were we doing? We were bored. He said, put some pakora on. And then just watching nonsense and whatever. And then just, you just don't, you just eat, eat, eat. And then... I, in fact, that guy, he, asked, he gave me permission to talk about this because I asked him. I went through his diet and I said, listen, Bai, I said, if you don't, if you don't stop, you're going to have a heart attack. I didn't see him for three months. I said, where have you been? He goes, you know, hey, go on India Times. So I'm in my room, I'm going to India Times, right? He had a heart attack on the plane. On the plane had to be diverted from Dubai. He was on his way home, got to Dubai, and then he went back all the way back to India to admit it. I said, I told you so. And now he listens to me. And mashallah, his, his diabetes is normal, 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 it's almost reversed, his cholesterol is very low, he's absolutely fine. 
And this is why this it's, why it's really, important. really important. So, so a, bit a bit on bit fats, fats, okay? okay. Co obviously, obviously, you guys you don't guys cook, don't but cook. try and cook try in olive oil. oil. Okay? okay? And that's, that's prophetic, prophetic as well. well. Processor used, used to cook, cook and he used to massage with olive oil. There's a secret in that. It's a blessed, the olive is mentioned in the Quran. It's blessed, it's sacred. So basically, cooking olive oil, okay? Avocado, fish, nuts like the tree nuts, almonds, hazelnuts. Okay, okay. Uh, walnuts. walnuts, really, 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 good, really good, for good for you. They're actually good, good fats. fats. You need you them need for them energy. energy. So I think so Ramadan, I think when you get hungry, you, hungry, you use, you use these, these fats first. first. It's like, it's your, like your storage. storage. Okay, okay. So, so love it. Love it. It's, fine. it's fine. Okay, okay. Limit, limit saturated, saturated fats, fats like, like butter, butter uh, cheese, fats on meat, and so forth. Limit it. So have a look at what's when you buy food. Go for. Don't avoid the saturated fats. Go for the unsaturated fats. Okay, and completely eliminate trans fats. So, so when you think, when you, think, when you look at these things, things like donuts, donuts cakes, cakes mitai, have you seen, seen jalebi being made? made? Goodness, Goodness me, when you look at it, you look at it, you think, I'm having a heart attack, just by looking at it. When I first saw how I was like, how do people eat this? It's like sugar, oiled, and then turned into trans fats. So like, now and again is fine. You don't want to be, have a balance. We're a ummah, we're a balanced ummah. Have it. But not, not all the, all the time. time. Not, it, it shouldn't be a weekly, be a weekly thing. thing. These things shouldn't, shouldn't be in your house. Because then you'll just go, just for, go them. for them. So reserve, reserve them for when, when you know, no, like, like my son, he's it's midterm, he got a good report, we got him a milkshake. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But like all the time and having it in your house, you know, it's just it's just not not worth the risk because we can't control it. Essentially your plate should look like this. Half of your plate should be obviously not fruit, but should be veg. Okay, so you yes, could so you do could a quarter, quarter veg, veg and then a quarter, quarter fruit, fruit and then and a then quarter, quarter protein, protein and a quarter, and a quarter whole grain, grain slow release carbohydrates. Can you see Can you how see flat, flat the plate, the plate is? is? Yeah? yeah? So your so plate shouldn't be a mountain. Be a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it should it be should flat. flat. Okay? okay? It should be flat. That's the sort of. And look, water. Okay, remember, we go back to one of those slides apple juice. It's like eight. Have you ever made you your apple, apple juice? juice? You use, you use tons, tons of apples. Of apples. One, apple's one apple's fine. fine. One orange, one orange is, fine. is fine. But when you but use when like you five, five oranges to make orange juice, orange it's, juice. It's, it's, it's like six, six teaspoons, teaspoons of sugar. sugar. Just have Just water. water. Processor Process Process only used to drink, used to drink two, two things. things. Water, water and, and milk. milk. That's it. There's a reason for that. And he was one of the most healthy, he was the healthiest individual on the planet. Okay, quick win. So then how do I substitute? If you're telling me, Dr. Saab, stop having carbohydrates. Well, I have roti, I have bread, I have rice, I have uh, potato. They're all staple diets. What do I do? Okay, I suggest that. So, so have it, but try not to have it more than twice a week. Small portions, go for brown, and have it no more than twice a week. And the rest of the time, if, so some people, they have salam roti every day. Some people, I know people, they have salam roti every day. That's their staple diet, that's fine. Why don't you do this? Why don't you get a massive green leafy vegetable? And use, and use that, that as a roti. roti. You no, know, try, try it. it. It's, it's hard, hard initially, it's hard, hard by, by. But then you get used to it. And you actually don't, don't feel as like sluggish, sluggish and, and, you know, no, oh, I can't, can't bother doing anything. Rice. rice. Why don't you why find chopped chop This is when the sisters don't like me. Because they're like, well, the brothers aren't going to do this. I'm going to have to do it. Just fine chop your rice. Fine chop the vegetables so it looks like rice. And just have it with a spoon. Like you're having soup. Try that. You can buy cauliflower rice. You can buy it. buy it, but just, just have that instead of rice. If you're going to have rice, try to have brown rice. rice. If you're going to have rice, small, small portions. portions. If you're going to have, you have rice, no more, no more than, than twice a week. week. Potato, Potato, go for go cauliflower. cauliflower. Okay? okay? And never, never please, please never, never have, have roi rice, rice, roti, roti and potato, potato in, at once. <laughs> no, honest. Because if you look at it, if, if you have the equivalent of one potato, one portion of rice, one loaf, let's just say one, make it easy, one loaf of bread, you're having, you're having 22, 22 teaspoons, teaspoons of sugar, sugar in one meal. One meal. And, if and if you do, you have to, you have go, to go, go for a run. run. And I mean a proper run. You know, if you and have if chicken korma with, no with no rice, no potato, potato no, no uh, roti, roti, you have to you run have to for run 34, 34 minutes non-stop non -stop to burn to that burn off. off. So, so what, imagine, imagine if you had this. So just, these are quick wins, okay? And you'll get used to it. And brothers who have tried this, some of my friends and family who have tried this, this has just completely changed everything. Their, their, yeah, weight their weight has just gone, just gone, their blood pressure has just gone. Just gone. 
if you stop, if you give up wheat, if you give up bread, roti, uh, anything that's bread based, within three months your blood pressure drops by about 10 points. Okay? That's better than any drug on the planet. You know, and there's no side effects. Okay? But, you know, the, the, we were talking about the you know, purpose of eating and spirituality and stuff like that. This is us at Iftari or Sehri. I'll come I'll back come in back before in I'm done inshallah to talk about this in a bit more detail. But look, the Prophet you know, he, he said, Ma mala ibn Adam wa ya'ani sharr min batni. Bi hasbi ibn Adam, ibn Adam, ukulat, yuqim nasulba fa inkana ma hala, fa thuluthu li ta'ami, famous hadith, fa thuluthu li shurabi, thuluthu li nafsi. So, you know, this famous hadith, Prophet said, there's no vessel worse that the son of Adam can fill except his belly. Okay? It's enough for the son of Adam to have ukulat in one narration, yuqaymat. My Shaykh Rahimullah, Mona Yusuf, he said in this, he said, Look, the Prophet said, Luqayma, not Luqma. Luqayma is small, small Luqma. And Luqaymat is anything between three and nine. Three and nine morsels. And then he said, Rahimullah, that Umar used to only eat three to nine morsels with a meal. Luqaymat, three to nine morsels, small morsels, okay? Just to, just to hold, hold his, his back, back straight. In other words, I'm eating to live. I'm, I'm alive now. I feel alive. Okay. If you can't do that, then one third for food. One third for water, fluid. One third for air. Okay. You know, just rewind 1,000 years ago when medicine used to be taught in Baghdad. Okay. At the center of Islam, Christians used to come to Muslim world to study medicine. Right. And there was this famous Christian. Uh, medic, uh, medic who was studying, who was studying in, Baghdad, in Baghdad and he read this and he said, Ya Ajab. He said, Who said this? He said, Ma sami'tu shay'an an killati ta'am min hadha. A'jab min hadha. I've not heard anything more ajib than this about how to reduce your food. Hadha kalam al hakim. This is the words of a genius. You understand? This was them. And, and Mona, fast forward to when I was doing this, I was telling my work colleagues last year that I was doing this, and they were talking about, oh, really, your religion talks about, you know, I was like, yes, it does. And I mentioned this to these, and one of the doctors, she like fell off a chair, she said, you know, as I said, if the whole world acted on this narration, there'd be no medical problems. She was like, wow. And the Quran, Kulu wa la tusrifu. Eat, drink, it's fine. It's a ni'mah. But don't be don't what? Be what? Wasteful. Wasteful. In fact, in fact am, I am I correct, Mona? Some ulama have translated, translated it as well. It has having two meanings. Two meanings. That, don't that don't waste, waste and don't be extravagant, be extravagant either. either. You understand? There's, 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 it's the two, two balances. balances. So these are the sort these are of things, things, things you want to talk about. about. And one thing, one thing that will help you is being conscious when you eat about this. And the way to do it is try and eat either, if you can, on the floor, sat like this. Okay, and there's a wisdom why the Prophet used to sit like this. Because when you press your stomach against something and you eat, the more you eat, it pops out, doesn't it? And I can't eat anymore. <laughs> right? Try and sit like this. Or even sit like this. And if you can, sit like this. This is impossible to do for us, these, these, like this. Because then what happens is that's those three positions, if you sit straight like this, are the only positions where your entire... Uh, G, uh, 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 entire uh, like gullet, gullet stomach, stomach intestine, intestine is straight. straight. You can actually, you can actually feel, feel it when it gets, it gets full. full. If you're slumped slump like, like this, you can't, you can't feel, feel it. it. You understand? understand? So it's about, it's eating, about eating with purpose. With purpose. Okay, we'll okay, we'll quickly move on. Move Physical on. activity. activity. Remember this, Remember okay? This, okay? This, is from this is from Dr. Asim Malotra's book, The Palpy Diet. No matter how much exercise you do, you cannot outrun a bad diet. If you have a bad diet, run all you want. It ain't gonna work. Okay. okay, it will, it will help, help you with you reducing your blood pressure. pressure. It will make, you, make fitter, you fitter, but it won't, but it won't help, help you lose weight. weight. Like full, full stop. stop. Okay. okay. Now look, there's, now look, plenty, there's plenty of health benefits. benefits. I'll let you read it for yourself. yourself. But, but ask yourself, yourself this question. question. If this was, if this was, a, was a pill, pill. If, I if I said to you that, you know what, if you started exercising regularly, you would reduce your you know, percentage of, say, developing heart problems by 35%, would you take it as a drug? If it was a pill, of course you would, wouldn't, 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 wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I look at diabetes. diabetes. If you do physical activity, you reduce your chances by 40%. Would you take it? You would, wouldn't you? Look at this cancer, depression, dementia, hip fractures. It's a no-brainer. 
If you do this regularly, it reduces your chances like this. And also, where the more you exercise, you know, people say, I feel tired all the time, I feel sluggish, and I have a, I have a really good diet. I ask the first question, how much do you exercise? I don't know anything. I say, well, look, your fitness is low. You become deconditioned. If you, if you want to improve your memory, obviously have a super rich diet, become more physically active, your memory will improve, your sleep will improve because you get tired. It actually repairs cells. When you exercise, certain hormones are re re released and it repairs damaged brain cells and it improves your concentration. You're more sharper. You ask anybody who's physically active, they're physically fit, they are very, very sharp. They're, they're awake. They feel alive because their fitness is, is good. So how much do you need to do? If you're an adult, okay, you need to do, it's not a lot, 150 minutes of moderate intense activity in parts of 10 minutes or more each week. That's it. That equates to 22 and a half minutes of walking a day. When I say walking, you walk, you walk fast enough that if you were to talk to somebody next to you, you'd be out of breath. That's the pace you want to go for. Not moseying, you want to like go for it. Okay? 22 and a half minutes of walking a day, that's it. Now, if you do, say for example, 75 minutes of vigorous activities a week, then that counts as well. So if you go to the gym, you do 25 minutes three times a week, you're done. And then what you want to do is twice a week, do, twice a week, do some muscle strength exercises, muscle exercises. Okay? It just increases your strength and your endurance. It's really, really good for you. And, and do that at do least that two days a week. And the other thing is, don't, don't spend a lot of time sat down. down. Every 45, every 45 minutes, move around. around. Okay? Because it's very easy to just sit there for ages. Okay, every 45 every minutes, move around. around. So, so what counts? counts? Lots, Lots of stuff. stuff. Walking. walking. In fact, walking, walking is, is brilliant. brilliant. Like, if you're, like not, if you're not, someone not someone who's, a, who's, who's, a, who's good at running or cycling or swimming, walking is actually really, really good. And all you need is 22 and a half minutes a day, every day. In fact, it's proven um, that it actually, um, because of the health benefits, it actually extends your life. You live longer. Swimming, cycling, hiking, gardening. Okay, it's hard work. Anybody who's done gardening, it actually can be hard work. But do it, do it regularly. Any sport, running. Have you heard of hit exercises? High intensity interval training. This is what I do. If you're lazy and busy, or both like me, if you do hit exercises three times a week, it's enough. Just, 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 just. Maybe you could. Um, you just got to be careful with your eyes, that's all. You look stuff on the internet. But um, I think someone who's... Just go on go on YouTube, type type up hit exercises. Um, and maybe look at somebody where the old eyes not, you know, is not exposed and stuff like that. But um, there's lots of you know tutorials you can follow. It's very easy to do. Hmm? Body coach, for example. Yeah, yeah. Hit exercises. Really, really good. But power exercises. Anything. But just do it. The point is that you've got to do it. You've got to do something. But it takes one thing. You have to get rid of your phone. Nah, I'm just, it's not a joke. Like you have to consciously think about this, okay? I am not doing this to show off. Allah knows my intention. I have never had a smartphone. And inshallah, I will never get one. I, mean, I might have to one day, Mona, because you, know, you have to get your COVID stuff through your phone now and you can't go anywhere without it. But as long as I can, I'm going to try my best. You know, because the reason why is, look, we have to have a balance for you. They are incredibly useful devices. They're very, they are. They've changed our lives forever, and they've I think I think they've enhanced our lives, to be honest. But screen addiction is real. It's real, and access at your fingertips is not necessarily a good thing all the time. Okay, and this is my personal opinion. You don't have to accept it and buy it. But my personal opinion right now is that I think the harms are more than the good with smartphones. I think the harms are more than the good. That's my personal opinion. You don't have to buy it. Because look, 40% of our time is watching TV or something on your phone. That's nearly half your day. right? Adults spend eight hours a day on a screen. That's after work. So, so the screen's either TV or your phone. The phone is like a mobile TV now. You don't need a TV. You can watch whatever you want on your phone and there's no one to see. You know anybody who can control their gaze <laughs> in this zamana with the phone is a wali. Because it's just, there's nobody in Allah who's, who's, who's aware. Children spend six hours a day on their phone. Six hours a day. Okay? I do, a, I do one on addictions. I can talk about more detail if you want to. You don't have to, okay? People check their smartphone every 12 minutes. And you know what's really heartbreaking? What's really heartbreaking? Mona, there's two ulama here, right? When they do their Jumu'ah khutbah, they spend a few days preparing for it, 
Okay, they don't just offer women what we're going to talk about this morning. They spend days preparing what we're going to talk about. What does the ummah need? And then they've given all that effort. And then honestly, you look around. Next time, look at look at look around. People who are outwardly pious or not, there'll be somebody playing a game on their phone. I'm telling you, there will be somebody playing a game. Now, let me tell you something, right? If you were to go to a church, that would never happen. If you were to go to a synagogue or a Hindu temple, that will never happen because everybody realizes that there's sacred spaces. There's certain certain things you do in sacred sacred spaces and certain 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 things you don't. don't. It's It's heartbreaking. heartbreaking. And then you go to Makkah, Medina, and in the Rauda or in Mata, you know, it's just, it's terrible, isn't it? But we're just addicted to it. And people swipe 2,000 times a day. Swipe on their phone. You know, it's just mad. And essentially, social scientists now tell us that people spend five years. When you hit 60, by the time you hit 60, five years of your life has gone on your phone. And let's do some maths, maths, right? right? Let's just just say, say, let's just do 60, 60, okay? okay. How many hours hours a day do you sleep? sleep? This isn't me, this is Sheikh Ahmed Ali. I've stolen it from him. How many hours a day do you sleep? Eight. Okay, in 60 years, how many years of your life has gone? 20 years, gone, right? How many hours a day do you work? Eight. 20 years has gone. You've got 20 years left. Sheikh Ahmed Ali said, First 15 of your years of your life, you can cancel it. You can do anything anyway. Right? So you've got five years left of devoting yourself to Allah. And you've spent it on your phone. You understand? It, it is complete. And, 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 and I don't buy this thing, well, I use it to read Quran. You only pick up a Muslim, brother. You know, it's just, what's the problem? Oh, well, you know, I look at, I listen to Bayans on YouTube. Why don't you go to a Dars? You know. Just, it's things like that, and the problem is, is that when you've got things at your fingertips, you don't value it as much, and you become passive as opposed to active. I'll give you an example. I say this to my children, because their children are like, oh, Mommy, Daddy, why are you always so bothered telling us to go to the library and find that information? Because he said, look, when I was in medical school, we had to, this is like, I sound like I'm talking 100 years ago. This was in year two, between year 2000 and 2005. It's not a long time ago. In John Ryan's library, you had to wait a week or two for books. So when you, so when you got, got them, you knew you only had it for a week or two. So you had to really like memorize this, because you wouldn't get that book back. It take ages. You got you got four hundred people in medical school look wanting the book, and there's only five five or six books. So when you got it, you valued it, and you like really like I'm gonna copy this book down. Now when you know something's on your fingertips, you don't have that. You don't have that deep attachment to it and focus and devotion to it, and that happens in your dean. It does. You can memorize someone's bayan all you want. But the reality is that if you can't do something simple like come for fajr, something as simple as that, what's the fayda of you listening to a thousand bayans on your, on your smartphone? This, it's the mizaj which is, which, which is affecting us, which is more than anything. In fact, I'm sure he won't mind me saying because it's public. Last week I, I went to see Shaykh Sayyidullah Habibullah and he said, you know, I make dua. Okay, Allah, we were fine before social media. We got on fine. Allah khatam khatam khatam. is doing so, so much, much harm. harm. And I was thinking, thinking you're, you're right. right. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. right. You know, it's you know, just... It's um, just um, are you guys, are you guys tired? tired? Huh? 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 Okay. <laughs> so we'll finish so on mental health, inshallah. Mental I mean, we should do this in a bit more detail. detail. Um, um, but look, you know, this is, we, this is, we need to have conversations about this as well. This is just scratching on the surface. One in five men and one in five of our women, this is us, suffer from mental health problems and establish mental health problems, okay? One in ten suffer from suicidal thoughts. There are people amongst us that we know who are drowning in life. We need to be there for them, okay? And there's a massive stigma, there's a massive sharam, isn't it? You're not allowed to have it, you know, because there are all sorts. And, it really, and ultimately what happens is people don't seek help. So one so thing that I, that I say, and apologies if I'm, if I'm overstepping the mark, but I, I, I genuinely don't believe it's a sign of weak iman. That's my personal opinion, no one has to buy it, but I don't think it's a sign of weak iman. And the reason why I say that is because when the, when the Prophet when, um, uh, when he and the Sahaba, when they were expelled from Mecca to the Valley of Abu Talib for three years, and they were eating leaves, and, and then they, they came out, came and then Khadija Kubra passed away. passed away. Abu Talib passed, passed away. The, the ulama of Sira, they, they call that year the Amun Huzun, the year of sadness. It's okay to have emotion. 
Allah says, La tahsan, inna Allah ma'ana, don't grieve Allah's with us. When they were in the cave, Abu Bakr did on the Prophet And so it's okay, Allahumma ni'auduka min al-hammi wal-huzn. The Prophet recognized that actually having worry and sadness is a natural emotion. There's nothing wrong with it. And it can affect anybody. But the good news is you can get better. What we do in our communities is a death wish. If somebody finds out he's got depression, she's got depression, khalas. They'll say, oh, you know, my good you. Don't hang around with that person. No one marry her. No, no. They're like, don't marry him. As if they can't get better. It's really bad. And people don't seek help. So basically, my key message is, and we'll talk about it in more detail if you want, but basically, if, if anybody's suffering from this, or if you know anybody, tell them it's okay and acknowledge what you're feeling. It's really important to acknowledge what you're feeling. That I feel sad and it's okay. And then learn to be gentle with yourself. Take it easy with yourself. It's, oh, it's, it's absolutely fine. You actually, if you go to your GP, but you don't need a GP referral anymore. Google Trafford IAPT self-referral. IAPT is improving access to psychological therapies. You can refer yourself. You don't need a GP. And then seek therapy. And the reason what, what, why we say seek therapy is because you can change the way you perceive things very, very quickly if you ask somebody to teach you how to do it. So I'll give you an example. Imagine you're driving home from work. You're desperate to get home. You want to get home. You're tired. You need the toilet. You're hungry. You're driving home. Somebody cuts you up. What's the first thing you do? Don't say it. <laughs> okay. You know what it is, don't you? Beep, beep. You know, fingers go up and you start swearing. Okay. What if, right? What if you could, you know, imagine that was me and I telepathically told you about that. You know what, bro? I'm so sorry, but I gotta get home because I just found out mum's got mum's gone hospital. I'm in a rush. What would you feel straight away? Black like, right, bro, allow it. Right. Instantly your perception changes, isn't it? Right? right? You can do that at any point, at any time. And the reason why is because whenever something happens, the first thing that happens is an emotion. You feel angry or hurt or sad or exciting. It could be an emotion, right? Then the second thing that happens is a thought. So you get angry, then you think, oh, he's an idiot. Then, you're, then the last thing that happens is your behavior. You'll beat people at him. Right? Right. But, if but if you change, change perceptions, perceptions and you get, you get somebody, somebody to, to, to teach, teach you how, how to do it, it you, can you can actually change, change the way you think. Way you think. And, and when you change, when you change the, way the way you perceive, perceive things, things, it's not it's a fight not anymore. anymore. It's, it's not a fight, not a fight anymore. anymore. And, and actually, the, actually the easiest way to do this is actually sit with people who have mastered the soul. Sit with people who have mastered the soul. Like our, you know, the cream of our ulama. Mona Hashim, Habibullah, once, you know, he, he's one of he's Hazrat Sheikh, one, one of the last few Khalifas in this country. There's him and Mona Bilal, isn't there? Once, right, he said that I was walking and one of my students, I said salam, he didn't say salam to me. I said salam, he didn't say salam to me. And it came into my heart, why did he do that? So there's an emotion. The emotion is, Hurt, hurt, a bit of a bit anger. anger. I'm your teacher. I'm your teacher. Not in an arrogant way. way. There's an other business. It's like parent-child, like parent -child, isn't, isn't it? it? The thought the is, what's wrong with him? What have I done? And his behavior, and his behavior was like, like you know, yeah, fine. fine. But then he then stopped, stopped and he thought, thought no. no. He said, he why said, do I feel that I'm mustahed of his reply? Why do I feel that I deserve a reply from him? That's a bit arrogant of me. In an instant, he changed his perception. And his emotions changed, his thoughts changed, his behavior changed. There was no there was ill no feelings, feelings anymore. anymore. That, that was, was done, done not through a psychologist. A psychologist. That, was that was done through the tarbiyah of his sheikh. So you can you do can all do of this, this in a quick way, way if you actually just sit at the feet of people who have mastered the soul. soul. But this is what this is CBT what is, but you, can, you, you should, should do this with depression and anxiety as well if you have it. And then in anything in life, and this is especially mental health, you have to realize that if you want change, if you want, and I'll finish with this, if you want health, if you want well-being, if you want change, it starts with you. starts with you. No one can do it for you. No one, no one can do it, can for, do it you. for you. Same with Same deen. The ulama, they give us they advice. It's up to you to do it. Okay? okay. In, in, in fact, fact, the Quran says it. The Quran says it. Says it. That, that it's a choice. choice. It's as if it's Allah's, you know, he's given us a blueprint. Let's see who does it. Let's see who doesn't. Who's not going to do it. And the rest is up to you. And one thing I'll say is, look, avoid toxicity in your life. Get rid of a toxic diet. Get rid of toxic inactivity. Get rid of people who are toxic for you. There are two types of people in your life. Some that help you grow. And some that some burn, you. burn you. People, People who burn, burn you, you, eliminate them. them. As in, not as like... <laughs> as in, cut, 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 cut them out of your life. life. But, but take shura with ulama of how to do it. Because there's rules. There's still your brothers and sisters in faith. In iman. 
you have to ask an alim, how do I do it? How do I deal with this person? But cut it out completely. The other thing is, honestly, cut out social media. You will survive, you'll be fine. Okay, I still have friends. <laughs> okay, and these friends, I could count my life with them. If I needed money, if I needed somebody to look after my house, if I needed somebody to look after the kids, if I had an emergency, they'll be there. True friends. When something happens, they don't text me and say, Ah, oh, inna lillah, sorry to hear, I hope you're okay. They'll ring me and say, Bah, are you okay? I'm coming around. True friends. You understand? You will survive, you won't miss out. I haven't had WhatsApp in my life. I don't know where, when the bayans are going to happen. You understand? Just tell somebody who can't get off WhatsApp, let me know when there's fula fula event going on. You won't miss out, I'm telling you. And the reason why is because you know in, uh, I think it was May, April, May, first lockdown, they did a study of young people who, who just stopped Facebook for one month. That's it. They stopped Facebook for how long? One month. That's it. And within one, one month, the vast majority had far less depressive and anxiety symptoms. Within one month. Okay? Because uh, we could go on, for, I won't talk about it, I'll start. And then essentially, what I, if you want to like shift your focus, shift your focus, just focus on these things. Most of us focus on things that don't really matter. Most of us focus on what really matter. Focus on your health. Okay, your health is everything. Okay, focus on your health. Focus on your, when it says wealth, think about what do I need? Not what I want. What do I need to be stable? And then stop. Okay? It's not necessary that if you have more wealth, you will be healthier. It never has worked like that. I've got plenty of patients who are filthy rich and they're miserable. Okay? Just think, what do I need? And then once I've got that, I'm fine. That's what you focus on when it comes to wealth. Okay? okay. There's, a difference There's a difference between, between being, being rich, rich and being wealthy. Being wealthy. Okay? okay. So have a think about, think about that. that. Instead of just chasing, chasing the money, you know, because, because it's only what it does. What money does it? It becomes your like subconscious, subconscious god. god. That's, that's what, what you think, think about. about. That's, that's what, what you live for. That's what you die for. Remember, La ilaha illallah came to take us away from all those chains. Okay. Especially money. Okay. Growth. Think about. Okay. Am I growing in my and when I say when growth, I, say I mean growth, developing. Am I developing in my health, in my fitness, in my psychology, in my spirituality? Think about growth. Focus on that. How can I grow in my career? How can I be better in what I do? Think about how am I going to contribute to the community around me. Think about how am I going to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my religion. Okay? Like you have to. In fact, that's the most important. This was done by non-Muslims. This isn't like some Muslim thing. This is a non Connect with what you believe in. Okay? Because your religion is everything. Without, without it, you, you have, have nothing. nothing. You understand? You so have you nothing have without your religion. religion. You, you have, have to connect and ask yourself, okay, okay, what does what Allah does want from me? And then and figure out, how are you going to find that out? And how are you going to be? Ridiculously, ridiculously important. important. Like relationships. relationships. You, have you, have to, you have to, you have to master, master relationships. relationships. The, most the most joy in life comes through what? Intimate relationships. The most pain in life comes through what? Intimate relationships, right? The most the joy and pain comes from... You, if you're with your wife, you have to master that relationship and make it work. Whatever the cost. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. But try your best. You've got to give it your all. It doesn't happen like that. If you focus on your close friends and family around you and give them your everything, and if you focus on these areas, your life will probably be far more meaningful than trying to just achieve all the time. There's a difference between achieving and fulfilling. There's a difference between achieving something and being fulfilled. But focus on these areas, you'll probably be a lot more happy. And then the last thing is strengthening your faith. And one thing that, because um, uh, time's running out, if you can, just um, uh, take a look at this dua. It's recommended to read this every day by our ulama. Uh, if you can, morning and evening is even better. But it's one of the recommended dua, the, uh, the supplications that our ulama recommend us to read. So there's a story, there's a story behind, behind this, this of a sahabi, sahabi called Abu Umama. He was sat in Masjid Nabi and he was, he, he was sat like this and he had his head down. And the process, he came into the Masjid and the process and said, Ya Abu Umama, what? He, said, he said, Ma ajlasaka fi, fi masjidi fi ghairi waqti salah. Why are you sat in the Masjid and it's not even time for namaz, for salah? And he said, Humumun um, uh, uh, rakabatni, uh, wa duyunun ghalabatni. 
He said, my sadness is just completely, it's just riding my mind all over the place. I just can't stop thinking about it. And my debts is over, overwhelm me. So the Prophet said, should I not tell you a few words that if you were to say it, Allah will remove your worries and will sort out, you know, take care of your debts? But I asked you, of course, tell me. So the Prophet recited this. Abu Umar said, in no time, my worries disappeared and my debt was paid off. So it's recommended to read this. But read it with a purpose. Look at the words. I seek your protection from worry and grief. From weakness and laziness, from miserliness and cowardice, from the burden of debt and anger of men. These are the eight biggest causes of sadness. All of these things. And they're related to yourself, okay, and people around you. The three biggest causes of stress, financial stress, social stress, and career stress. And it's all in that, in, in that. Your problems will be solved. But get into a habit of reading it. And then ask, and then one thing that I also say to everybody, Muslims and non-Muslims, if you had one week today, what would you focus on? Would you let half the stuff that drive you mad, would you let it drive you mad? You wouldn't care about half the things, would you? You wouldn't, would you? You'd be like, whatever. Right? How would you spend your time? Would you spend your time eight hours a day on your phone if you knew you had one week to live? You wouldn't, would you? What would you choose to ignore? What would you choose to do? And essentially, essentially that's, that's been, been the mizaj of our religion, religion from the beginning. You understand? That's, that's been, been the, the, our mizaj, mizaj, the mizaj, mizaj from our, from our, from our, from our religion from the beginning. beginning. And that's, and that's why, why some, some of the salaf, salaf, you know, they used to, this is mashhur, they used to, in those, in those days, days you could do that. Do that. In their in courtyard, they'd dig a grave. And every night they'd lie down. And they'd say, this is my grave. And they'd talk to themselves, they'd say, Yanafs, oh, you know, blame really so. What do you want? I want Jannah. Jannah. How are you going to get that? Through, Through you know, you know um, uh, uh, serving uh, my Lord. Lord. Say, Yanafs, Yanafs, oh soul, what do you not, what do you, what do you, want, want, you want, what do you not want? I don't want Jannah. Jannah. How are you going to save, you yourself, save yourself from that? that? By, disobeying By disobeying you. you. As in, you're, you know, uh, disobeying Allah, then I'll end up in, 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 in Jannah. They say, Yanafs, you're alive. Get up. Go. Stand in Qiyam. Read the Quran. Be in Dhikr. And so forth. They would do they that do habitually. That now, if you're, if you're in that state, state of mind, mind that you that you, that, that you that genuinely, genuinely believe that, that at any moment, moment my time, time is up, if you genuinely, genuinely enter, enter that state, state of mind, mind I'm, telling I'm telling you, brothers, brothers it's a, it's a game, game changer, changer for the rest of your life. life. You, you will, will think, think twice about what you do, how you do, and whatever you do. It's really important to enter to enter that sort of mindset. Okay, really, really important. And remember Ramadan's lesson. Okay, you can eat, you can survive off little. And, and there's a, there's a, a the materialism, materialism, you know, just, just the whole, the whole concept, concept just disappears in Ramadan, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I mean, how yeah, generous are Muslims? You know, Muslims are the most generous, generous in the country. country. No, they don't, no, you? don't you? In Ramadan, how, how generous are people? Generous because they realize that money's, money's nothing. nothing. So don't, so don't, don't fall, fall for it, because that's, that's the, the... We'll stop then. And essentially, what I'm trying to say is put needs before you want. There's a difference between what I need and what I want. And put being before having. I want, I want this, this I want that. If you have a mansion and you drive the best car and you're going on holiday every three, four, three, four months and, you're and you're, you have the best clothes, it doesn't define you. It doesn't define you. Okay, there's a difference between having and actually being. Okay, because some of the most brilliant human beings I have met, brilliant human beings, Muslims and non-Muslims, the, the best are actually those who aren't that well off. They're the most simplest human beings and the most, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. And essentially this is it. I'll let you read it. The intelligent one is the one, that this is the prophetic definition of intelligent. Not doctor, not professor, not engineer, not so-and-so, not lawyer. The, the uh, intelligent one is the one who suppresses his nafs yep, and works for what comes after death. And the foolish one, al ajiz wa he just follows, follows his nafs Whatever it wants to do, and then has false hope in Allah. But it boils down to one point. Anybody know what that is? There's only one person to follow. Now, if you like take chunks out of the process of life and look at him, like there was one brother, he's, he's a convert, he's now a sheikh now, he converted his father. And his father, when we were talking about it, he said, you know, I looked at the process of his life and he taught me how to be a man. He taught, I mean that. He taught me how to be a man. Right? 
He taught me how to be a husband. He taught me how to be a father. He taught me how to be a co-worker. He taught me how to be a businessman. He taught me, because he was all of these things. He taught me how to be a leader. And then he said to me, he said, why did you never tell me? Why did you never tell me? This is a convert. But essentially he could see, within three, four months of converting, he could see the brilliance of the process. If you take, like, if you, if you have problems in your life, whether it's with your health, whether it's with your physique, whether it's with your mental health, what we're talking about today, just take out what, did the pro what was the process like, and you'll have answers. It's the quickest way of doing anything. And so if that means you have to get books out, if that means you have to sit, sit at the feet of ulama, remember, if you had a week to live, would you do it? You would, wouldn't you? Do you know how long you'll live? No. So it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Allah give me tawfiq, Allah give you tawfiq, inshallah. We'll stop there, inshallah. Any questions? No personal questions. This is the thing, I do this. It takes one, what each one takes one hour, but the um, second one should have left for another day. We can do that. Yeah. We can do this, we can do the second one. We can do the third one. Yeah. Very nice to see, but it's not about the Hindi price. Yeah, like we can stop it. I mean. Amen. 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 Amen.